Okay, in this exercise, we're going to do a simple 24 by 28 garage. We're basically looking at frost wall in the front. It's going to have backfill on the back side and the sides. Uh, so we want a little larger block with the 8-inch core. So follow along. We're going to try and put this whole thing together. Basically, we're going to start with the footings are already in. We have number five verticals at two foot on center. And we have our step down footing, which is 32 inches, which is two courses of bill block, which will flush with the other footing as we go. So as we, as we do our layout, we've already snapped our lines at the dimension and we're ready to move forward. So we're going to get our frost wall started. And as you see, uh, we're just going to cut it up against the step footing. And we're going to move forward. And we're going to place our first rebar. Now, because we have backfill on the, on the main part of the building, we're going to hold the rebar to the inside portion of the wall, which is the stronger tension side of the wall. So we're going to get a little extra strength uh, by doing that. So as the second course goes in, you see now that we have actually offset our rebar in here. When we take a look, we can see that we're in the number one slot and the lower one is in the number three slot. We're creating a chase in between those uh, to run our vertical steel up. So we're going to run the next course all the way around and we always want to run two courses and that allows us to make sure all of our cuts are right. Now in this scenario on the back wall you can see that we've created a vertical seam here where we basically have one odd cut and we have a full block with the 12 inch which is our offset piece below and I've just highlighted the, the blocks that have cuts in them and what I wanted to show you here is on the side is if we don't do a vertical seam we are going to do an offset or whatever our cut is to make our layout and it's just going to offset every other course just like this and what you're going to notice these nailers are not going to line up they will every other course so this in most cases is not a big issue but it's just something you have to be aware of a common seam basically straight up all of our nailers are going to line up and because we would start from each corner and go to that point we're basically going to have just a clean all nailers lining up and on this side you can see that we have that same cut but we stuck it in the middle of a doorway so that I really don't have to worry about this cut till I get up above the door so if you have windows or doors that's the best place you want to put that stuff one thing to remember now is when we get up there uh, with two courses we want to check our cuts make sure everything's square everything is tight we're to our line if we have to shim and trim we're going to shim and trim it but at that point we're going to spot glue it to the footing and it just takes a little bit of the foam adhesive, probably every 18 to 20 inches apart, inside and out. Stick it in the little hole uh, that the block create when they sit on the footing. And then stay away from it for about 20 minutes uh, until it hardens. Once it hardens up, uh, you're going to see how stiff that wall is. And it's going to allow you to work around it without worrying about moving something. So remember, two courses, not one course. Um, whenever we put the glue down or the adhesive because if it were just one course we might get a spread in the block and then we're going to play it so always remember two courses shim and trim spot glue to the footing that's all it's going to take when we get our backfill ready a lot of times you can keep going but you can backfill to this point and then pour your floor in many instances just makes it a little easier you don't have to do it right away a contractor would normally just keep going and uh, do the whole thing before pouring the floor
but this is one way for easy access and as I stated we do two courses by doing two courses we make sure all of our nailers everything lines up we make sure all of our cuts are exact and that everything fits if it's one course going around and something were to move or spread then we're gonna fight that block all the way up so we always want to get our wall interlocked together now in this particular case here you're gonna see that I actually backfilled the front of this building empty I was just careful I was only basically going up one course of course as long as you backfill it evenly on both sides the block will handle the pressure you don't have to do it that way you can put a stiffener a 2 by 4 stiffener and stake it back but generally we're not going to pull a truck in to pour these two courses and have that expense of them coming out so a lot of times we can do this whether we backfill it first or not but anyway if we're going to pour the floor we're naturally going to backfill it one little quick tip about the floor I could have held that floor to the inside of the wall uh, because generally when you hang a garage door an overhead door it's going to hang to the inside of the building and it's going to come down on that concrete right on that edge and then when I pour my approach or the concrete uh, outside of the building I can lower it down three quarters of an inch or when I angle it and then uh, screed it off it'll, it'll automatically if I have an angle on it will fall a little bit but it just gives me a little water stop there um, keeps it below the main floor and uh, otherwise I would want to take the width of my wall and actually kind of turn my concrete down a little bit so when it rains I don't have water there uh, if I have a center drain running to the center of that building so uh, just something to remember that you don't have to pour to the outside if I had to pour it flush with the inside of the wall I wouldn't have had to worry about uh, uh, the runoff I'm going to have some runoff with my concrete on both sides of the door uh, falling into the wall which is gonna I'm gonna have to allow for that when I ordered my concrete for the floor that it's gonna fill some of that I don't want to pour any of the wall that's going to be above my main footing at this point because it'll create a cold joint below grade I don't want to have a cold joint so uh, put nothing in the wall other than around that door it's still below the floor where it runs out or put a board up and reform it and pour it flush with the inside of the wall and then uh, once your floor has been poured uh, and your wall actually gets poured when they pour the approach on the outside concrete uh, then they can fill in between and uh, have that little bit of a drop coming into the garage just a quick tip so moving forward going to continue here's our third course and as you look look down the wall you're going to see that we're offsetting our rebar back and forth and everything and then we're going to run our fourth course and then this is generally we're up this high you can see how that offsets working on our on our block back here um, and how our vertical seam remains the same so at this point uh, it becomes hard to place our rebar so this is where we would normally put our alignment system in and as you watch the alignment system going in uh, basically every six feet we're going to bring it in from the corner uh, in this particular one we brought it in uh, three bars to the fourth bar uh, and, and put it in there and I've done both sides and there's a reason we're doing both sides first which I'm going to show you that way when I do the the two ends what's going to happen is under these doors or under these corners because they'll conflict each other I've had to lower the bracing down so when you look at it it's going to look like this and I'm going to be able to set my my plank right on top of the other plank that's hanging over on both sides so in doing so that allows me a nice even transition at the corners keeps it 
fairly close to the corners. Now, I know I told a lot of you to offset your corners uh, by a bar or two. Uh, it does work but if you do the same bars on this instance, it's four bars each way. As long as we're lowering the one side down, it really doesn't matter. The thing to remember is that brace we want on both sides because the most important thing is keeping our corners plumb. And we want to have that on both sides of the corner best we can to hold that position. So uh, it doesn't matter where you put it, try to get it as close as you can to the corner uh, within uh, 16, 18 inches. At this point too, we're going to set our door frame, our rough opening, and continue up with our build buck, put it all together, and this allows me to screw in through, through the brace into the buck to hold everything exactly where I want it. The other thing I want you to notice is we have one more course. This is six courses. This is eight feet to this point. This is going to be an eight foot door. Uh, so we're going one more course. But if you notice, at this point, I set my vertical steel. It's a lot easier than trying to manage that, that nine foot two or whatever piece of uh, steel you're going to have wavering in the air. This gives you a little easier to place it and set it in place. And as you can see, it's going right between the other bars for our strength. And it's going to give you easiest opportunity to set it. We've only got one more course of block to go. So there's our top course. As you can see, get our, getting our rod, starting to place the rod, work off our plank. The front. This is our stirrup situation. Um, as soon as it catches up, there we go. So you can see how the stirrups go into place fit perfectly this is two number five in the bottom and number four on the top we're going to run two foot past the opening on both sides that's the standard and we're actually going to have a double rebar coming up both sides of the opening usually within six inches of the opening so Basically, you can take that and lay it, actually lay it down, the two bar, and then lift it up. Because of the size of this header, uh, you can see that the integrity of this block is compromised because we, we had to cut the bottom web off so we don't have the, op the, the strength at the bottom of this. So, uh, as I ran a horizontal brace out here, that's protecting it from spreading on this side. And on the other side, I probably would run a board here and here to give it some strength from spreading from the pressure. The outer brace, because we're fairly close to the corner, we're just turning the corner here. We're trying to spread the pressure of the pour that's going to push against that frame from bulging that corner out. So that's just an added precaution. And we make sure we go over across the window all the way because basically we're just butting our blocks here. So there's no real strength. If it were to have a lot of push here and we didn't have these in, it could spread the top of the wall. So these are all precautionary measures that we take to make it work. So we've got our block up, we've got our steel in, and we're gonna pour it off. And as we pour, we are gonna to tow these walls in in the middle, we're gonna pull them up against the brace. Make sure your corners are plumb. 
and we're going to pull them in a little bit, put a string line around the outside, usually a three quarter inch board offset with the string on it, so we can have a little three quarter inch board that we go out there and put it on and uh, can slide that board in between the string and that to make sure it's uh, perfectly straight. So at this point we're pouring, we're going to set our anchor bolts and basically use the foot plank I'm on to go on top of the wall. I like a wide enough plank to cover all the concrete. I don't want any wicking of that cold coming up through the footing, uh, up through the concrete. I want to have that capped off on top so we're not putting any of that into the building. You do your layout of the size plank that you have. Code requires that you have a, a bolt at least within a foot of each end of each plank. So this is where my plank ended and as you see we got a bolt on each side uh, just to conform with the code. So basically other than that it's every four foot on center. And then you're going to put a sill seal down and it's kind of a, a neoprene or something like it's it's a it's something that won't hold water but it's a it's a it's a plastic type uh, insulator that you put on you can just poke the anchor bolts through it and basically when I'm setting my anchor bolts I have a uh, little 2x4 or something I can set on the wall to make sure they're all the right height and the reason for that is when I get ready to put my anchor bolts or my plate on top I can set it right on the bolts tap the board with the hammer and it will mark where each bolt is and then all I have to do is flip it over drill the holes and set it right on if you got one higher than the other it's kind of hard to do that so take a little time when you set your anchor bolts and make sure they line up and it'll be a lot easier for you so now we're going to put our plate on we're ready to set trusses on this in particular this particular one uh, the trusses are going to be there's going to be a gable where the garage door side is uh, it's just a little workshop this one was actually built but it was actually built going up again with a garage over top of this garage so in a future video what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to take that top off and we're going to create a build deck floor right over the top of this showing that we're going to go up again and have a garage door on the top using utilizing the upper level at this point uh, everything goes out we clean up our site we can at this point run the waterproofing where we're going to run it and there you have it that is the complete level ready to ready to construct hope that helps give you an idea on the progression of how this stuff actually works it really is a matter of just playing it simple and getting it to this point so thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one